Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Cat Lady Podcast. My name is Andrea, the Cat Lady. That's two T's, C-A-T-T, -T, Craft All the Things. Thank you for joining me. This is episode 82. It's November 20th, 2018. This will be a pretty short episode since I recorded late last week. Uh, I don't have a ton of things to talk about, but I made some progress on my sweater, so I thought I would get one in before the holidays, and uh, we'll just make it short. Um, well, thank you for joining me. If you're new, thanks for checking me out. Like I said, this might be a little shorter, so if you want to see more of what I do, uh, go back a couple episodes and check those out. Uh, this is primarily fiber crafts, knitting, spinning, that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah. But I do craft all the things, so uh, sometimes I throw extra weird stuff in there. So, Anywho, um, yeah, so you can find me on the internet as The Cat Lady on YouTube as Crafty Cat Lady. If you like what you see, please subscribe and like the videos. Uh, if you are on Ravelry, I have a Ravelry group. Just search for The Cat Lady Podcast in the groups. Currently, in podcast news, I have a craft along going on, so if you are making holiday, holiday gifts or decorations or anything that's holiday really related, and any holiday, <clears throat> uh, you can enter to win a prize. Hopefully, maybe not, maybe by like next week. Give me a week or two to rummage up some prizes. So I know I have some stash yarn I can throw out there. Uh, I can probably get a bag. Um, and we'll see what else I can drum up. Uh, if anyone has anything they want to donate for prizes, feel free to let me know and add that in. Uh, prizes are only going to be for U.S. Uh, entries right now if you are international and I might do a separate drawing for that um, <clears throat> and do a pattern giveaway. So a credit for a pattern So, because shipping is kind of crummy. So, uh, Other podcast news, I, speaking of patterns, I have two, I have two patterns on Ravelry. One is just a pretty simple headband that's free and the other one is called the Twinsy Shawl and it is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's been a year since the Twinsy was released. Uh, it was released last October so I'm a little behind but for the whole week it's half off so if you uh, want to check out the Twinsy Shawl I will put a link in Ravelry uh, in the podcast group and you just use the code Mary M-E-R-R-Y Twinsy T-W-I-N-S-I-E again I'll put that in the Ravelry group and get the pattern for half off, which is $2.50 American is the half off price. I think it's a $5 pattern. I think that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but uh, if you're on Instagram, you can see pictures of that on Instagram. So that's that. So that is all for podcast news, knitting. I have nothing finished. We're just cranking out on uh, sweaters and I'm going to start Christmas presents soon. So uh, works in progress. I'm really gonna, just going to show the one because I did not get any more done in my tin can knits flax. Actually, I guess I will show it because I can talk about it for a second. So my flax sweater, uh, like I said, I haven't made any progress since the last time. But I did manage to get another cord on there so I could try it on. And it seems to be fitting fine. So I had pretty much just separated for the sleeves. But I, want, I didn't want to get any farther until I tried it on. It's very dark so it's hard to see in like, the patterning. But you can see the garter panel there. Um, but it, it seems to fit, so it's hard. It's still hard to tell when it's, I only have like half an inch down, but I, I'm confident enough to uh, continue knitting on it. Um, <clears throat> but before I work on that, I need to get this second sweater done, which is a Christmas present for my mom. So this is the, that was the Flax by Tin Can Knits. Uh, this is the Seclude by Alicia Plummer. So last time I talked to you, I was right about at the ribbing. So I had like two or three rows and then the ribbing. So I got the whole body done. And then I started the sleeve. So the sleeve picked up right there. And I've got almost the whole sleeve. So I have the, I'm just about, I'm just done with this color. I need to, uh, not the color, but I need to do the thumb hole and then a couple rows and then the ribbing. So I'm almost done with the sleeve. The sleeve should be done today. And then I will pick up and start the next sleeve. So then all I'll have left is the next sleeve and then I have to do an eye cord, applied eye cord around the neckline. So, so hopefully, I'm hoping to finish this uh, maybe, probably by the end of the weekend. Um, Today is the kids' last day of school for the week, so tomorrow is a lazy day. I don't have really any plans. I have to start prepping for Thanksgiving, so hopefully I can uh, get a good chunk of the... I mean, this only... I probably only worked on this for 
two days. I, I mean, I recorded last Thursday, probably worked on it Friday. I didn't work on it a ton over the weekend. So maybe a little bit on Sunday and yesterday. So, so that's turning out pretty good. The only part I kind of bothers me a little bit, but it's, it's not too big of a deal. But the yarn had this little white spot in it. So hopefully that doesn't bother my mom too much. So it's fine. I mean, it's part of the little yarn. It's, but I mean, I kind of didn't really pay attention and notice it until I was like farther down and I didn't want to rip back and you know, so, and there's a couple little like black spots in it too, which don't bother me as much. It's just, just the yarn is a heathered yarn. So that's just the way it is. But, um, the white spot sticks out a little bit. So hopefully that doesn't bother. Uh, okay. So that's that, and it is, I'm working on size 7 needles, I'm just using double points, I find, but it's easier for the sleeves. The last one I used Magic Loop, and I just, I'm not a huge fan of Magic Loop, so. Um, that there. Oh, I forgot, in other uh, knitting stuff, I guess it's not really, I guess it's a finished object, sorta. Um, I did some rabbit surgery. So if you follow me and have seen things, I make these bunnies for my kids. We call them Mr. Buns, or this one just ends up end up being called Red Bunny. So Red Bunny is a very important part of my son's bedtime routine, and just Red Bunny comes a lot of places. So Red Bunny is the Lion Brand Blanket Buddy pattern that I actually shrunk down to a little minier size, because if you follow the pattern, it ends up kind of big. But it's fine, but... Uh, I kind of liked the smaller, smaller size. So at one point, Red Bunny lost his ears because my son would chew on them. So Red Bunny got new ears like a year or so ago. This, this bunny's been around for a long time uh, since he's been a baby, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> uh, he had a couple. He had a green one and maybe a yellow one. <laughs> We've gone through lots of bunnies. But uh, Red Bunny's been around for a while. But Red Bunny got new ears. Well... <laughs> Red Bunny lost his hands, again, from chewing and whatever. So Red Bunny now has new hands. <laughs> this one was like, yeah, all, all the way into the into the actual like blanket part. So I reattached, you know, I just, you know, I fudged it in there, but uh, made him a new arm on that side. And then this one wasn't as, but as far in, but pretty much had to replace his hand. So that is my bunny surgery. So Red Bunny is back in business, and Dave is pretty happy because he was kind of sad because we were like, well, well we, we can retire him and put him in the memory box, and I can make you a new bunny, but, you know, this is this is the bunny. This is the, the bunny, even though he's like, oh, his hands are nice and soft. Yeah, his hands are a lot softer because they're not all worn down. So that is the Red Bunny. So that is all my knitting. Uh, spinning, I didn't even grab it, but, again, I... I I just wanted to show my sweater today, really. I should, this is just the uh, sweater update, I guess. Because um, spinning, I didn't really do anything more with my odds and ends. I don't have any finished. I'm still working on the pinky orange one that was I showed off last time. Uh, I haven't touched my fiber optics gradient on my wheel. So again, it's like sweater. Sweater needs to get done. And then holiday stuff. And I talked about my holiday knitting last last week and so I will talk about stash right now to talk about what I'm using for my holiday knitting. So I picked up on both the teachers looking at their little sheets they filled out with their favorite things. Both said they like purple, one said they like blue and purple so I just decided to go both purple. So this is, I got the Deborah Norville Premier Yarns Every Day. Oh I guess maybe not Deborah Norville anymore. The one says Deborah. Premier Everyday, Deborah Norville. This one does not. Maybe she is no longer the everyday yarn person. So, anyways, Premier Yarns, Everyday Yarn, anti-pilling. I've used this before. It's really soft. Um, you know, I my gloves I currently have are in Banna's Choice, which I looked at that and they didn't have purple, but uh, it does pill. I'm guessing this is going to pill too, but it says anti-pilling, so I thought why not. But I've made gloves in these before, uh, probably the same color. This is the... Auber aubergine yes this is the exact same color is this aubergine too yep okay yeah. so this will be the main morning mitts by claire parks uh just some fingerless cozy fingerless mitts and actually i'm thinking last year i made i made them to pattern which they stop right at your knuckles 
I made my pair that go up to my, about my fingertips and then I fold them over. And you will not believe how many times I end up flipping them back up just to, you know, like today I was holding a hot, co hot coffee, so I flipped them up to hold my hot coffee and it was cold outside and just kind of covers up your fingers a little bit extra. So that's almost like a mitten without the top, but, and then it looks good rolled down. So it's very, a little more versatile. So I think I might do it that way again. I might just follow the same exact size as my mine that I made. Um, and then for Christmas ornaments, I think I told you that I had some over here. I probably showed those off, so I'm not going to show those off again. Um, and my scrap yarn blanket, I still got to pick out my minis for that, but that's it. So, but then for other stash, which I'm semi-regretting this purchase, I guess and I am and I'm not. It's hard to, hard to say. I kind of, I want, I want to make another seclude for me. So I'm working on the one for my mom, and I thought this would be really a pretty combination for Christmas for a Christmas sweater. But obviously, I am not going to finish a another one by Christmas. I'm just I'm not going to do that to myself. So I'm to be. So do I wait till next Christmas to knit it in this color? Because if I knit it now, you know, if I start it like after Christmas, there's no way I'm gonna save it for Christmas. But the yarn was on sale again. I just went with the Karen Simply Soft just because it was on sale. It was four four skeins for ten dollars. So so they were only two dollars and fifty cents a piece. So I'm I don't know. So I'm deciding. So maybe I will end up going and buying a different yarn for another seclude and save this for next Christmas. But I wanted to do this red with a uh, white contrast at the sleeve, and I just think that would be like super pretty, super Christmassy. I mean, it would look pretty anyways, but I don't know. So. If you have any thoughts or opinions on that, let me know what you think. If I should just make it anyways and wear it all year round, or, I mean, not that I wouldn't wear it all year round anyways, but I thought, you know, it would be like the unveiling Christmas sweater, and then I'd wear it. But now, if I make it in January, I'm not going to just let it sit around until Christmas. I'm going to wear it. And then I feel like by the time Christmas rolls around, I'd want something different. So that's my conundrum. But it probably will become a seclude at some point. Uh, and then I bought this just because it was kind of cool. It was just pretty. It was another Deborah Norville every day. And I'm actually I was thinking making another pair of Finglet Main Morning Mints for me uh, in this color because it just looked fun. It is the lava color. It's just pretty reds and blacks. So I'm curious how this will knit up. It won't have any weird pooling. But the Main Morning Mints are ribbed, so it would break that up, I think. Um, but yeah, it's super soft. I like it. So this might be another pair of mitts for me. Um, but next up, as soon as I finish, actually probably within the next day or two, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna cast on a pair of mitts because those will be good travel knitting and you know, for Thanksgiving and stuff like that. So I'm not hauling out a sweater. Um, <clears throat> wannabe stash, so there is Another Kickstarter project for the Electric Eel Wheel Mini 2. And it's a whole new shebang, a whole new design, whole new everything. So basically, I bought the Kickstarter, I backed the Kickstarter for the Eel Wheel 5. Um, so he's had lots of versions of these Eel Wheels, sold a bunch of them, but whatever. And I like it. It's a little bit loud and a little clunky. But it works it works pretty good. I've spun on it, but I don't I don't use it that very regularly, but and it was it was affordable. It was uh, very budget friendly. So it was a fun project to back. Um, I don't regret it or anything. Tempted to sell it to maybe back this new one. Um, but I like, I do like it. So I don't, I don't know if I necessarily want to get rid of it. I kind of just want to get the mini. But the EO wheel, reg the regular one, it's like this big. So I mean, it's still very portable, but it's, it's, you know, tangible. The mini is like this. It's tiny. It's mini. Um, but the bobbins are the same size, so it, a full bobbin. So it really, it's just like this, uh, it's very bare bones, but, but it's made with like a, I think it's a, it's a must, some sort of plastic because it's purple, which I love purple. So it's a, it's a purple colored and it's got like ball bearings construction to make everything spin. And so it's like a lot quieter. It's a little faster spinning. Not that I spin super fast. Like, as it, you know, I don't need it to go that fast anyways. I don't crank my original one up that fast anyways. But, it, you know, everything just seems smoother and it's quite and the quiet, the quieter, you know, everything. And it's a little smaller, so it's a little more portable. Um, and it's, again, it's like super, like, budget friendly. Like, I could get the real bare bones basic package for 60 bucks, which is the unit 
and three bobbins. But the one I kind of really want is this, the plus package, which is the, you, you get six bobbins, which I really don't use extra bobbins, but you get a USB cord and an orifice reducer. You know, I don't know. Maybe I don't need that. Maybe if I can, I mean, it probably takes a standard USB cord because I don't need an orifice reducer either because I don't really use that either. I just, I mean, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know. I don't notice an issue with that. So, but anyways, I don't know if I, but it's a hundred bucks with shipping. So the other one's $70 with shipping, the other one's hundred. And then they don't ship out until July. There's already thousands of people ahead of the line in, me, in front of me. So I probably wouldn't even get it till next Christmas, but it's Christmas time right now. I don't have the extra money to throw at it. You know, we're in the midst of Christmas shopping and everything. It's like, uh, just, yeah, I don't know. So, but that is on my wish list. Maybe, I mean, maybe I could just buy it after. Usually he sells sells them after the Kickstarter is completed. So, I don't know. But again, that's probably not going to be until, like, January 2020. Yeah, because, like, it comes out July 2019. I'm guessing he won't fulfill 1,000 orders until, like, October, December, November, December. I don't know. Sometimes, somewhere towards the end of the year. And then, like, if he decided to offer them and then flat out for sale, it wouldn't be until... 2020 which it sounds crazy to even say that so I'm just forgetting everything today so um I forgot to show off and this isn't I'm, it's, I'm putting this in stash because it's just too cute not to share um, but I bought these at uh, Costco and there's like the, there are these slippers but they're like super squishy and they got little bunnies on it and this came with two pair this one's kind of a cable-y cable pattern but they're like these like massive slipper socks plush fill lined so yeah these look amazing I haven't tried them on yet but oh look at those they look super cozy and super cute I know they're gonna get a little dirty but they got little non-grip or non-slip grippies on the bottom so yeah these are gonna totally be my uh, house slippers I know I should knit my own but I don't know these were like cheap at Costco and they're too cute to pass up so and they and they look uh, nice and knitted so I can just tell people I need them I don't do that but that's uh, a extra stash. Um, that's it. So, life in review. I'm getting ready to get ready and geared up for Thanksgiving. Tomorrow, I need to chop potatoes and chop some vegetables and get everything set up for that. I need to clean the house. I'm having my dad and his girlfriend and my grandmother over, so that'll be fun. Pretty low key. Uh, and then on Friday, the kids don't have school, but Jim has to go to work, so it's going to be another kind of pajama day, probably. I'm not going Black Friday shopping. I maybe do some internet shopping. I don't know, but um, I don't do the Black Friday thing. I wouldn't mind, but I can't with the kids. You know, there's just no way. And with Jim working, I don't know. So usually my Friday, my Black Friday tradition is to make turkey soup. So I bought a 14-pound turkey. So I will probably... Um, throw that carcass in a big old pot and I got uh, all the onion, carrot, celery, whatever to throw in there and let it simmer all day long. Like literally all day long. Like I'm wondering if I, I might want to try it in the Instant Pot this year or the uh, or the Crock Pot. I don't know if I can fit that all in the Instant Pot or not. So, But uh, that might, yeah, maybe, that'll, maybe I'll try something different. But literally it sits on the, usually it sits on the stove all day long. So and I make turkey soup and I think I still have leftover turkey. <laughs> maybe, you know, I don't know. I think I had leftover turkey broth from last year. Like a big thing of it, so. Either I need to take that out and make turkey gravy. I might want to take that out and make turkey gravy for it, for this year. Things to think about, anyways. So, but I don't know, I just think the process of making the turkey stock is kind of fun, so. But then I just, I don't, I always forget that it's in the freezer, and then I don't use it, so. But it's fun to make, and it's fun to eat when it's nice and fresh, so. Uh, and then Saturday, we are, oh, still on Friday. So, we supposedly have soccer practice on Friday, which seems kind of weird. My dad's girlfriend and my dad are having her son and daughter-in-law over. To my dad's house on Friday and she kind of wanted us to stop in again Jim's got to work but I mean the kids might stop over there uh sorry I'm sitting on my feet and hang out but uh but I kids might have soccer I emailed the coach today to ask because it just seems weird like I don't know if they mistyped it on the uh, flyer or if it's legitimate we have soccer so I'm waiting to hear back from them because 
again, that seems kind of strange. It's, you know, holiday weekend, people are going to be out of town. I mean, we're, we're available, we'll go, but yeah, again, you know, it's kind of semi-ruins the plans we could have had, you know, because I think, uh, yeah, it'd be fun to just hang out at my dad's and not have to worry about it. And we don't, I mean, I could skip it, but, you know, we're paying for the program. I don't want to necessarily skip it, so that's not teaching my kids a good lesson either. Oh my gosh, my legs are asleep. <laughs> so, I need a place to sit. I need, like, a chair. <laughs> um... Saturday, then we will go with my, we'll meet up with my mom and that side of the family. And usually we meet for dinner at a, just a local restaurant and, um, yeah, it's pretty low key and I see that side of the family because you can't fit everybody into one day, okay? Like there was, there was a time that we would try to fit two to three families in one day because we have Jim's family and then, oh, my feet are falling asleep. Uh, and then... My mom and then stepdad and then my dad and his girlfriend and so yeah so we've kind of alternate well we kind of ended up with the Saturday schedule with my mom so that works and then kind of my dad and then Jim's parents get alternated for Thanksgiving so last year we went to Jim's parents and this year we'll do something with my dad the next year we'll do something with Jim's parents etc um, uh, but yeah Saturday so we'll do that and then we usually go through the Wayne County Light Fest if you are from the area it is a drive-through light festival ish thing it's like a bunch of these like you know light displays look like santa claus and bells and christmas trees and you know they move and wave you know like they have little characters that look like they're moving or jumping or whatever snowflake falling all these little light displays uh and you just you sit in your car and you drive through it so but i used to do that as a, with my parents as a kid all the time so it's a good uh Good memory and fun to take the kids we did that last i think i'm trying to remember if we've done it once or twice i think last year might have been the first year we did that so this will be maybe a starting a new tradition so because we're not really close to that area so um it just works out to do this so yeah um my kids are home for five days wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday <laughs> so i'm not really looking forward to that but uh, send me coffee, send me wine, chocolate, <laughs> I'm gonna need it. Um, but that's it. Christmas shopping is underway. We've got a lot of stuff done for the kids. We still have like extended family and stuff, but it's not even Thanksgiving and we are ahead of the game, but you have to, kind of have to do so with a lot of these, uh, kids toys because, you know, the hot now toys, they sell out or they're, you know, unavailable or they jack up the price, so... Um, not that my kids are into the hot and now toys, but eh, there was a couple we ordered that were on the top toy list, so It'll be nice to it's just nice to get that out of the way uh, Lastly, I will talk about a couple podcasts that I've been listening to uh, After that fiber friends tag I stumbled across a couple new podcast new to me podcasts that I've been uh, checking out so that would one of them is buckaloo buckaloo view and it's a uh, woman who lives on a farm with that name, Buckaloo View Farm. So she does dyeing and spinning and knitting and all sorts of stuff on her farm. So she's been interesting to watch. And then Hooked on Owls is she crochets and knits and she makes the cutest little Emma Groomy things. And she's actually uh, semi-local to me. So um, I like uh, I've been catching up with her. And then, of course, uh, my old favorite the wayward skein which is lynn who's toll baby uh, uh formerly uh, of the two tangled skeins so i've been keeping up with her and that's been good and then the reluctant sisters podcast she's been back uh she took a break for a bit and so she's been back adrian is the reluctant sister on instagram and um yeah she's been uh being fairly regular with her podcasts and blogs vlogs so that's been fun to keep up with um, i mean i did call out to her to see if she wanted to do a joint knit along or craft along or whatever maybe next year uh, so maybe we'll do something fun as a joint podcast thing and that's all I got a little rambly sorry uh, I really just wanted to show off my sweater update because maybe by the time I podcast next this sweater will be done and maybe I will put some more rows on my flax and well probably not because really, maybe I'll have some gloves done so I might have a lot more done and I still gotta get out the 
Christmas ornaments and so much stuff. So, but that's all I have. I hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving and don't eat too much and don't shop too much. Um, if you do uh, Black Friday shopping, be careful and have fun. And yeah, hope everyone enjoys time with their families. And I thank you for everything, uh, for checking me out and keeping up with me. And I will talk to you next time.